Welcome back to Ben Wallace Media and the first in a line of shifted focus topical videos I have planned for this channel. I've had a predominant focus on Western culture and topics in the past topical videos and Musical Minds episodes. You'll notice a shift to the East in my upcoming content on this channel. There are many things in music that the East does differently from the West, which I have so far touched on, but not explored at a much deeper rooted level. I'll be starting this shift in focus today on one of my favourite styles of musical technique, throat singing. So first of all, what on earth is throat singing? It's a good question. Throat singing consists of several styles of resonant harmonics produced in the throat, achieved through precise control of the vocal cords and the shape of the vocal tract combined with breath control. Overtoning, whereby one can produce a melody over a drone note, becomes more than possible with this specialised ancient form of singing. Throat singing, known locally in Asia under several different terms, Jumi in tu Tuvan and Jum Jumi in Mongolian, Kaji Raw is more specific to Tuva, a deeper voice overtone. There is also Hunu, like the Hunu rock, which I'll cover a bit later on in the video, which takes inspiration from the early century Chinese tribe and later empire of Shang Nu, incorporated into folk metal bands such as the Hu. In more modern times, throat singing has become a phenomenon here in the West. The sheer difference and incredible art of what one can actually achieve with their voice through practice may initially strike us as odd. However, with further listening, enjoyment and fulfilment of the sound can be heard. Historic reasons for performing such a different type of singing may have been attempts to try and contact the world of the afterlife, the supernatural. Considered backward throughout the 20th century, practice, the practice was for a time restricted. Eastern Russia and Mongolia re-established its presence in the final years of the 20th century. So why do they do it now then? To perhaps help gain favour of the spirits, being able to summon shamanic, which are practitioners of interacting with the spirit world, spirits and Buddhist gods. It should be noted that there are other reasons for throat singing, and it isn't explicitly tied to trying to contact the dead. Now, whilst I don't personally believe in ghosts or anything of that sort, it does fill me with creepy euphoria to know that even long ago in that part of the world, they used such a beautiful form of song to communicate with loved ones who have passed. I prefer it to the rather over-the-top technology we see in get games we see now in games like Phasmophobia and on television programs of which all are entirely fictional. I briefly mentioned some types of throat singing earlier, however I would like to go more in depth here. Kumai implies a soft style with diffused harmonics above a bass drone. Seed, a clear whistle-like melody above a drone and Kajiwa, a low growl rich in undertones. Roland is known as Borbanadir and Izengelir, which is an imitation of a horse rider hitting the stirrups. There will be more on horses later on in the video. There are many styles that have been developed over the years. These are the more well-known ones, of course. Throat singing is a type of instrument in whichever form on its own. However, it is often accompanied by some type of Asian instrumentation. Fiddles, lutes and zithers are some of the instruments that you can expect to see in accompaniment. Bands such as the Who use more specialised instruments such as Kurs, which is a traditional Mongolian bowed fiddle, Tovshur, which is a which is shaped like a bow, referencing the Mongolian archers of old, 
is a three string loot from Northern Asia and Shores, which is an end blown flute of varying length. Likely one of the most important aspects of throw singing is that it is most often performed in groups. It is this communion, this coming together to create something beautiful that is the essence of music at the very core of what it should all be about. Even solo, you are still producing multiple layers of intricate sounds that come together to create a song. A completely unique song. A beautiful song. A song that resonates all around across the horizon. However you do it, throat singing makes sure that the sense of coming together is at the epicenter of the art. I'd like to quickly cover some of my favourite throat singing artists. I've already mentioned Mongolian metal band The Who, not to be confused with The Who from, well, the, the, old, the older band. They've been going for eight years, of course, forming around the new heightened interest in throat singing. My favourite track of theirs is Wolf Totem, which is also their best-selling track, certified platinum in Canada and gold in the US. The track is a six-minute metal blast of Mongolian proportions, featuring deep kaja roar and lyrics which tell the story of the mightiness of different animals from the Asian animal kingdom doing battle with us. The track has an awesome choral chant and amazing vintage style music video. There is also a version featuring English lyrics from American singer Jacoby Shaddix. I'll include the link to both tracks in the description, so give it a listen. With 100 million views on YouTube, it is clear as day that this style of music is definitely extremely popular the world over. The Who, along with some other bands that incorporate throw singing, have some extremely high level nuances that I wish to quickly touch upon. Firstly, in Wolf Totem, in particular, as has been picked up by many vocal specialist reactions here on YouTube, the Who using the casual style, that deep drone note, that also encompasses the lyrics. You would expect the level of our understanding of these herd lyrics to be somewhat degraded. However, these Mongolian singers are so well trained at this type of throat singing that none of the enunciation in their sing speaking or singing is lost at all. I thoroughly recommend watching these music videos with the translated subtitles on if you can't understand the lyrics. This will be for a future video in which I cover more of the science behind the throat singing technique. I'll include some links to YouTube videos which go into more detail on this particularity. The second cool nuance I'd like to touch upon very quickly is the use of the Moran Kur, known in English as the Horsehead Fiddle. The Mongolian culture is heavily centred around horses, the national animal being the endangered Privoltsky's horse. The strings of the Moran Kur are made from a horse's tail, which is the same for the bowstrings and the headstock or the peghead, as it is known on a typical guitar, is shaped into a horse's head, hence the English name. You would have heard when listening to Wolf Totem, or in another track of theirs, Uve Uve U, the sound of a horse name. This is actually the mooring curl being played in a way that has an almost completely accurate mimicry of an actual horse. The instrument and the ability to replicate this sound and make it work within the music, I love a lot. When it comes to music from The Who and other bands, and other such bands, their music has such power and patriotic pride, you can feel it within you when listening to it. As one of the comments on the video said, music video said, if you play this for a Cooper Chickens, you'll come back to Velociraptors. Another favourite of mine, is South African sound therapist and overtone instructor Nestor Kornblum. His videos on YouTube demonstrate his mastery over the multiple tones that form when throat singing to a high level. He describes the resonance deep within us, where other primordial human qualities, intuition, instinct, unconditional love, compassion and joy reside. Nestor Kornblum runs The Essence of Harmony, which is an overtone singing module. I'll include a link to his page in the description. 
His ability to throat sing at such an incredible level shows just what is possible with the human voice. It also proves that this form of ancient music, musical technique is not just limited to the East. Many in the West have also mastered this type of singing, Nestor Kornblum being among them. There are of course many other examples of throat singing, of which I do also listen to. Those two are my favourites, however, that I, wish to talk, that I wish to talk about in this video. Deep inside ourselves, we are able to do some amazing things. The East has many wonders that the West are only just discovering for themselves. I have enjoyed the art of throat singing since I was young, and I am grateful to our Eastern neighbours for sharing this incredible type of music with the rest of the world. We're very lucky. I hope you enjoy this video and one of my first videos in this new transition to a focus on music from the East. Please do leave a like or dislike. Any interaction is welcome. A comment and maybe even subscribe. Thank you for watching. Take care and goodbye.